Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'll just be honest. I am both nervous and excited to be standing before you. Um, I never um, thought that I would be standing here at this moment during this time, uh, sharing the stage that many, many great people have been on before me. Um, I really am grateful for this privilege, and I thank Sajin Uncle and the conference for giving me this opportunity. Um, the reason why I'm here is because um, I attend the University of Houston, where I am a college student, but I work and live with college students on the college campus. Um, and that's the ministry that I'm involved in. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to just read a few statistics to you real quick. Um, they're actually some painful statistics, um, but I'm just going, going to go ahead and read them to you. On college campuses, almost 25% of students that come suffer from some sort of mental illness that is diagnosable. 19% of young people on college campuses contemplate or attempt suicide. Almost 40 to 50% will suffer some sort of assault at the hands of someone, even someone that they know. All these heartbeats and tragedies, they're not unique. All these people come from various backgrounds. They come from broken homes, terrible relationships. Some are running away, some don't even have homes. And they're entering an environment that is unloving, uncaring, and antagonistic, full of uh, people who don't care. Eighty percent of professors will teach them, claim that there is no God and that there is no one that cares and that there is no plan. And sadly, almost 70 percent of students who enter with faith will leave their faith in college. These are devastating and heartbreaking numbers. Um, they pain my heart just reading them and sharing them with you. Unfortunately, this is the reality, and it's not unique to any one people group or one religion. This is the brokenness of the world as a result of sin represented in the microcosm of the campus. I want you guys to just think about that for a little bit. Um, someone said they call me a missionary. I never considered myself a missionary or would use that title. But as we've been hearing from speakers, uh, sharing about what mission is and what our responsibility is, it became more and more evident, and this is something that I've been working through as well, is that there is no classification as missionary or not missionary. There's simply the faithful missionary and the regressing missionary. And I'm unfortunate to say that for most of my life, I was the latter. I was someone who simply floated by and made his way through the church and through life. Had all the good answers, had all the good appearances, had all the things that was required of me, but it was really a lackluster faith, nothing worth uh, bragging about, nothing worth uh, presenting. But college was a turning point for me, personally. I realized that as I was trying to go and imp impose on other people what I had learned and what I had thought was right, something became more real to me. I was little, I was broken, and I was hurting. Someone uh, very in need of God. I knew God, but I hadn't truly embraced him. And it was the people around me that I was trying to bully into thinking the way that I think that loved me and cared for me and extended grace to me. That's when I realized that there's a bigger picture out there that when you're walking in life, specifically on the campus, that there are those people around you and those opportunities where you can extend grace, where that you can extend love. I've had the privilege for the past four years to be part of an organization called InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. I know there are um, some in this audience that are part of it or hopefully will be joining it soon when they come to college. Uh, and it's an organization that has taught me that the Bible is important, but it's important to love God, but it's important to love God's people. InterVarsity has shown me that when you're on the campus, these aren't just random people. These aren't just numbers or statistics. They are souls and they are lives that God loves and God cares and that I should do so as well. I've had the privilege of leading Bible studies. I've had the privilege of sharing the gospel with people. I've had the privilege of helping people understand their faith again. I say privilege because it isn't something that I did. 
It's something that God did, and I'm so thankful that he used me, someone that wasn't uh, profitable. And my encouragement to everyone here is that I'm not in college ministry because that's something I chose to do. I'm not a college minister. I'm just a college student and hopefully like to call myself a disciple of Jesus Christ, loving the people around me. And I pray that when I leave college, I will be in career ministry, that I will be in family ministry because that's where I will be. That's where God has placed me. I'm just going to share a couple of things with you before I close up. A young girl is sitting alone in the cafeteria. She's come to school. She's tired of the faith. Another friend invites her uh, to have dinner with her, invites her to a Bible study, keeps encouraging her and loving her. Uh, now she leads a Bible study. Another person comes, goes to faith, knows all the right answers, uh, but doesn't care about it is persistently annoyed by their small group leader or Bible study leader to keep coming. They become a small group leader and in fact become a leader of the fellowship. I share these stories is because these are the things that I've seen. I've seen people that don't believe in God hang around Christian community because not because they believe in God, because they, I love your company. You guys are the greatest people to hang out with. No one would love me. No one would care about me. No one would have meals with me. That's the testimony that I love to hear. And that's why I encourage you about college ministry. It is one of the ripest fields out there, but the laborers are truly few. And if you care about your college students, and if you care about college students in general, I encourage you to uplift those who are around you, those who are serving in those areas. I encourage you to get involved in, uh, through any college ministry. These are one of the most vital years of our lives. And I know it was the most vital years of your life. I guess just to put it in perspective, InterVarsity is actually part of an international uh, branch known as IFES. And if I remember correctly, the Indian, the chapter in India is known as EU. I, I don't know, is, was anyone involved in EU when they were in India? I'm not sure. If you raise your hand, if you were involved in EU. Yeah, and I encourage you to talk to those people. My dad was telling me about how he used to go door to door trying to encourage people to come to their meetings. We're not missionaries because that's what simply God called us individually to do. We're missionaries because that's what we are. And God has blessed me with that privilege and I pray that I can continue to carry that forward. And if you're out there, if you are a college student or about to go into college and you feel that you can't do it, you feel that you're not gonna be able to survive on that campus, that you won't be able to stand for God, that you won't be able to love people, I tell you this, that it is possible that God can make that a reality. I encourage you to find Christian community. I encourage you to be advocates in your church and in your communities for that kind of action. Get your churches involved in college campuses and ministry like that. It'll change the world. It'll save lives. It saved my life. And I promise you that it will not go in vain. Thank you.